and we have begun. My name is Stephanie. I am the host of Creative Street, and today I have with me Mark. Mark, go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for having me and inviting me, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. So my name is Mark Smeets. Uh, I have ADHD, or I am ADHD, rather. Uh, I don't want to say have as in like I've got a cold or something like that, but i um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to do this because creativity is something that's very near and dear to myself and everything that I do, no matter what industry I've been in, which I'll dive into a second, um, is uh, it's all creative to me. So, um, you know, in typical ADHD style, it's, you know, I've got a lot of deep buckets of experience from web design and computer programming to 14 years in logistics. And um, I've been in triathlon training. Um, or trained for a triathlon, rather. I'm not doing it right now because I've buggered up my shoulder. But um, cooking and baking, and um, you know, even as much as Strata president, and also I'm a music. I've been a musician for thirty something years as well. And I just realized the one thing I forgot that I was going to get before I did this. But um, a lot of uh, what ended up happening for me is when I look at my life, I, I have my sort of logistics, logistics side of life. Um, but when our son was born and we were trying to get a grasp on autism and ADHD, mm -hmm. um, which is a whole other journey, mm -hmm. the, it really came to a point when, um, I sort of, not that I had to make a, I, I, I really, I didn't know I was making a switch and I didn't know I was going to end up being an advocate the way that I was. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for my son's journey, if it wasn't for the two hours of my wife and I making fun of me to realize that I had, that I was ADHD as well, mm -hmm. I would not be having this conversation and I would not have, I would not be at this point I am now. And it's, and it's pretty awesome. So that in itself is a nutshell. The only one piece I forgot um, is I was a competitive swimmer when I was a kid. And I actually do that right now is, well, I'm not doing that as a, I'm not doing competitive swimming, but mm -hmm. I, there's an organ, there's an, there's an organization in Vancouver um, that works with uh, kids who are on the spectrum mm -hmm. and uh, I help support those kids doing swim lessons and such. So I've taken that piece with me as well. That's so cool. <laughs> that so, is so cool. Go. All right. That that's awesome, Mark. Like Yeah. So uh this is not obviously your first time being on a podcast, right? No, actually I should talk about I sorry, I should actually give you that piece too. Yeah. Um because of our journey that we've had, uh this inspired me to start my own podcast, which is called We Are the ADHD Family. And it is essentially our journey with ADHD, autism, and, and as I say, other discoveries along the way. And it really did start with our son. And uh, the fact that as parents, you know, when Owen was born, we had no clue what the hell we were doing, much like mm -hmm. any set of parents. But when it came to autism or ADHD, we're like, what? So the the podcast was started as a result of that because ultimately I didn't want to see other parents and other families and kids mm -hmm. go through the struggles that we did. And I tell you, we struggled. And for us, it came to a head one night where Owen tore apart the house. He was four and a half years old mm -hmm. and we did not. And I was in the, I can do this while crying now, but uh, it was uh, 1145 at night and um, I was in the middle of the kitchen floor holding him, trying to, you know, praying he would fall asleep. And I was oh just cradling. Gosh. So that moment in time for me and mm -hmm. my wife, and, you know, of course you're looking at the destruction of your living room, mm -hmm. but uh, that did every, that, that is what sort of changed it. And that's what got me into being a far more of an advocate. And I think from that point on, a lot of the, oh, what's the word? I, I, I began to, like, my eyes really opened up to see what the barriers were, what the struggles were. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been very, 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 it, it's been a very amazing uh, journey so far, but I am sort of only one person. So on the pad, on the podcast, I've got my daughter who's six and pretty sure she's ADHD as well, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, 
she uh you know i get them recording the voices and stuff and they come and do the microphone like you know they'll do the intros and everything like they're thrown out throughout the entire thing and Mm -hmm. it's it's nice because it allows it's a it's it's this awesome form of just being creative and whatever ideas that come up here Mm -hmm. it's like i'm just going to do it there's no barrier no filter right and that's one of the traits of adhd is that um you know you've got an impulse and a reaction there's nothing in between stopping it you just sort of go and do it and and that's the really funny thing about it so we'll get to that part of my brain later but anyway (laughs) that's an act to me that's a strength like you don't know how many times I have to like stop and like rethink and just be like ah should I should I not like you just do it Uh, that's how the show start that's how the podcast started quite literally I had been thinking about wanting to do a podcast for a while. And I mm-hmm. thought, eh, maybe it's the right thing. And maybe about a year I thought about it. And mm-hmm. um, instead, and I would talk myself out of it. And it was my sister-in-law who who said to me and my wife were downstairs and, and they're just like, you should start one. Mm-hmm. And then I, it was at that point that everything, I'll just say it in a weird way, everything in my brain turned off mm-hmm. and- I just went and found the microphone, uh, had my old, I'd had my, I think I had the old Mac at the time or mm-hmm. whatever it was. And I just, or that, or I recorded on the PC anyways. Um, I, I just turned everything off and I began to lean on my music background, you know, recording and getting back into that. And it took a while, but it, it was, it was so fun to sit there and do. And I realized that I finally had a voice within here, Mm -hmm. like within your heart that nothing is stopping and you just go. It's so freeing. It is freeing. That sounds so freeing. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And, and you know what, the, the idea of what you're doing with the, with, with being, um, you know, focusing on creativity, Mm -hmm. uh, it's such an important thing because I think creativity is often overlooked as just the arts, mm-hmm. but no, it's not. And there's so many examples I can give you, um, which I'm hoping somebody is going to be like, oh, I am creative. That's that's what mm-hmm. I would love somebody to say. So yeah, there you go. I mean, there's a, there's a new little intro right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, honestly, that that's, that's why creativity is such a, Creativity is such an important topic for me, a theme, right? Because we we are creatives. Even if you don't think you're creative, I promise you, you are constantly creating. Um, something as like I was I was discussing this um with some colleagues, like, look, we've created language, we've created clothing, we are creating the moments in our lives, we create thoughts, like. We are constantly creating the world around us, your worldview, um, your relationships. You may not be physically creating artwork or music, but you are a creator. Like we are creatures of creation. We yeah. like to to bring things to life. We have ideas in our minds that we want to bring out into the world. Um, so yeah, creativity for me is it's a big theme and how we express our like our creative passions is it's so interesting because we we all have like our unique waves of this of expressing ourselves. Um yeah. like you have music. I I wish I could play a mean bass like you like you do. You do the guitar, right? Or the bass. No, no the my bass is my bass is right. You can see it on the video. I'll get it in yes. a Yes. Um and I was going to ask you on, on the music stuff too, like the, the things that you were done. Cause I asked, I could ask you about a thousand LinkedIn messages. Cause it's just the way my stuff flows out of my brain. Um, but I'm curious as to what got you passionate about creativity? What was it about you? Um, you know, like what, what were the events that led up to this and why, why this? So I've, I feel like I've been a creative ever since like I was a kid. Um, mm. I love drawing. Look, music is life for me. Um, even though I, I've taken classes and I've, I've played piano and I've taken singing lessons. Um, I've 
you know, I've danced like throughout my whole childhood. I did um, musicals and stuff like that. I've, I've done shows. Um, my biggest one that I, I continue like now to this day is, is my painting. Artwork has always been mm. a thing for me. Um, I've painted murals in schools and always been part of the art clubs um, and writing. So I, I, I talked about this in one of the episodes <laughs> that I realized that. So as I've been doing these episodes, these um, the podcast, I noticed that there's moments where my emotions are tied to the different creative expressions that I use. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So typically, like when I do my writing, I'm like in a somber, contemplative, sometimes even angry or sad type of yep. mood. Um, when I'm painting, you'll see me more like bubbly and joyous. That's why like most of my artwork, you'll see that they're bright colors and like, you know, very cool colors because that it's just the the feeling that I have when when expressing yeah. myself that through that medium. But what started me on creativity is exactly that. It's the fact that there are so many forms that we can express ourselves and we all have different levels of of our abilities to to do that. And I I don't know. It's it's just been always um it's always been in me and it's always been like a theme that I love to study. Even when I went to college and I studied psychology and I studied anthropology, some of those unique classes that I would take like as uh, as electives had to do yeah. with creativity and like how we interpret the world. And it's like, I, I took a, cre <laughs> I think it's a creative psychology and personality psychology. And it, it's so interesting. <laughs> so interesting pause for one second because my son hi to say, hi <laughs> oh, and Stephanie, say hi 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 Owen. when i was going with this popped up okay so i'm going to it by uh -huh. okay. oh okay let's maybe watch something different yeah that kind yeah. of weird. okay <laughs> no 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 but not here you can stay here with headphones if you want you can edit this part out no, it's fine. This, this is no editing. It's going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> and I love I said, you came in and say hi. I said the same thing too when I was like, you know what? I, and I was talking with a good friend of mine who who does, I mean, his name's Mark. He did, he's a pro at podcasts. I look up, he's mm -hmm. a friend and a mentor too. But, um, and, and he's like, are you, you going to edit stuff? And I'm like, no, not really. I think I'm just going to sort of just leave things. And I'm like, yeah, no, you're wrong um mm -hmm. the um no i i get i get where you're coming from on on the idea of just having these different things and for me like part of it like when i look back now it's so it's so obvious on on the adhd brain is that when i'm coming up with something a lot of the times there's something that goes on in my head mm -hmm. and it now I mean, I ended up playing music by mistake and I'll use this, use music as an example. I, I walked mm -hmm. into, I walked into band class in grade eight. I actually meant to walk into theater class. And, <laughs> um, the, the funnier part was came afterwards when the, our, my teacher is coming up to me and he's like, well, what instrument do you want to play? And I'm like, I don't know. How about saxophone? Nope. Taken, got too many already. Every instrument was taken. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that was left was something like bass. And he goes, well, do you want to play tuba? I'm like, no. I, I don't know nothing about music but i don't want to play it too but like no mm. thanks i'm not doing polka anyways um <laughs> so he goes well we need bass players oh okay sure okay. i'll do bass went home that night i mm -hmm. told my dad dad's excited dad used to play guitar mm -hmm. and um and so the the best part was i, I went to him after like during dinner i said hey dad what's bass and i'm and he and he's like what do you mean i don't know what a bass is and he goes, it's that thing Paul McCartney plays. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Who? You're like, what? What are you talking? I don't know. He And he's like, the Beatles? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I still don't get it. So <laughs> this is like, two th this is like 1989, right? Uh -huh. And he's, and he's, I know he's got his hat, his hand like this, you know, that the hand is <laughs> like, the, uh, oh forehead. My God. He's like, what did you do, son? 
anyways, once I sort of found out was like, actually, this is not what I want to play. I actually want to play guitar. And <laughs> that, even that's even funnier. Um, because he lived he lived his one he got he got a guitar that he wanted, not what I wanted. But um mm-hmm. when I heard um Iron Maiden's version of Phantom of the Opera mm-hmm. off of uh Live After Death. I'm a big metalhead. Um that changed my perspective on music and everything else. And I was already starting to listen to some heavier stuff, but like the albums that were huge at the time in metal, like Rust in Peace hadn't come out yet. Um, Mm -hmm. Testament was starting to get big. All these bands, like this is what catapulted me down the music path. And that was Mm -hmm. really it. But that create, but when, when I hear those ideas sort of in my head, especially musically, I never had that musical theory where I could um, articulate, oh, this is supposed to be a, I don't know. Um, An A sharp. A, a, a C sharp. This is a C sharp diminished scale, or this is a C sharp mm-hmm. diminished triad. And that was always a put off. But again, I understand why that was the case. So mm-hmm. I have all these ideas in my brain. I'm listening to, you know, a ton of Maiden, a ton of that kind of stuff, Anthrax, mm-hmm. all that all that good stuff. And it just served to drive that engine that was up there even more so. And because the ideas didn't stop, in high school, it wasn't too bad. Mm-hmm. in when life got to, when we got to be when you get to be an adult though that makes it that makes it hard mm-hmm. um but in anything like if i was to go to programming or something like that when i was learning how to program and doing databases mm-hmm. i loved it because my brain would just come up with ways and ideas that you people would be like well nobody's thought of this and the best example is I know they've got data lakes and data warehouses and 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 uh, and all these database driven websites. Mm-hmm. I was doing uh, when I was doing web design, I was doing that before anybody knew what any of this stuff was. I had dynamic websites that I had built for clients um, that and my own stuff as well that were all driven right out of a database that I was using Cold Fusion, HTML, and also. Um, which I'm call an access database. And I ran mm-hmm. however many websites I could off of it. And again, ADHD clue, my brain of just going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, mm-hmm. without stopping, without hesitation. That's how, that's how my brain just goes. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful, very, very, very creative tool and very creative engine The Mm -hmm. hard part is that it's very hard, number one, to focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a fan of the word focus, but choose one thing to do first, because sometimes you have 10 different ideas and how do you sort through that? And it's taken years of practice to get that straight. Mm -hmm. The um, keeping things in the right order as well, not only in terms of thinking through a process, but speaking, because my brain will just drop the thought and it's like, damn it, <laughs> I was going to say something. What was it? And you're like, screw this. Um, and so it, that's where the creativity side of things, really, it's it's more of a recent thought than anything else. But um, or at least when I was in logistics, the the mm-hmm. creative solutions that we have that people have it's not about the business numbers it just Mm -hmm. isn't it's how do you communicate a need for an idea and and how you know do you need help figuring it out and i like to hear these oddball things of you know someone's got a fraction of a thought and i'm like tell me more please Mm -hmm. tell me more and try and work through it and and that's the best part of it um back to the music thing there are certain ways that i'm feeling because i'm slowly working on learning music theory now Mm -hmm. um the like and i'm you can't see my whiteboard which i have a tip for anybody about that in a second but working my way through those things of you know if there's something in my head can i structure the sounds that i'm hearing within the context of a scale or the context Mm -hmm. of a certain triad or something like that i'm trying to be much more purposeful now and when i wrote my 
wedding anniversary song from my wife last year. Mm-hmm. That was the f- that was the first time because you hit on writing, which triggered something beautiful for me. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the first time I was able to write a song, and it took about a month and a bit, and it, to write a song as purposefully and intentionally as I possibly could have done. And by the time I was done with it, and it was a it started off with uh, two chords between A and B. I can't remember if it was A minor and B minor or A major and B minor or something like that. It was just a vamp between the two chords. Mm-hmm. Um, wrote a progression for it. And all of a sudden, what started off as just two chords, by the time I was done, I had 19 different instruments, orchestrated instruments, as well as um four different bass lines variations oh, so you, I, it I, just I don't have a guitar like that and it just yeah. the the vision came as you you started working like that's amazing and and that's the i i can i can show you the thing too the um the, the i credit um a friend of mine for really helping guide me because he knew more music theory than I did two friends. Um, Mm -hmm. But the other part of it was I really thank my ADHD medication for allowing me to focus, to, to, to choose, to choose one thought at a time, not Mm -hmm. five, one. And I could work those through. Mm -hmm. And I began to really listen to the voice inside where it's like, this needs a violin. This needs a French horn. This needs something. What's going to take the melody line to do it. And I don't, I've never written in an orchestra or anything like that. So it's, it's right there. And part of it as well on the creative side for bass, at least is because I have a six string bass. um, Mm -hmm. You have different, where you are in the bass is going to dictate what you're doing. If I'm Mm -hmm. playing up high on the neck, you know, mm-hmm. you're playing something with melody, most likely. Mm-hmm. If you're playing something down low, you are playing something to do with rhythm. And if you're playing somewhere in between, you're kind of maybe one of the two things. It just depends on what part and what you're doing. And and that's and that's just sort of how it, I look at it in that sense. The writing thing, um, my brain, uh, again, another ADHD little thing uh, was that I sort of have these two voices for writing the Mm. writing, the voice of the, what goes on up here Mm -hmm. and what comes out. And when I speak, Mm -hmm. I very much feel like two separate people at times, but Mm -hmm. not so much anymore. Again, practice. It's taken me years to get this. The, when I, there was an article I was writing for somebody and um, my wife always proofreads everything because she's smarter than me. And so, <laughs> I love that and shout she's, out. yeah. And so she, um, she, uh, she proofreads everything for me. And mm-hmm. uh, she's like, she always makes corrections. And this was the first time that, again, I sort of just started the medication, but it was the first time where she's like, I cannot make any edits for you. And I'm just like, what? Oh, and, and it was, it was, it, it was, it, it, it was such felt a like it still does. Yeah. It still does. I, I hold on to that emotional piece that you identify so strongly with. I hold on to it so much because the things are so strong. And being 48 and growing up this way, mm-hmm. um not having that validation for a lot mm-hmm. of these ideas. Growing up, being, you know, I wish I had had this when I was so much younger. I, I wish I was aware as I was now but again the the creativity side of things is we we are very 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 creative people and I mean we just hit on music and writing mm-hmm. you want to talk the you want to talk to business side of things there's I'll give you two tips right now um mm-hmm. everybody should get a whiteboard number one and I'm gonna take my camera off we're gonna do this watch this oh my arm so see there's the whiteboard half whoa it depends <laughs> But you can see up there that that's yeah. a uh, that's a D major scale. I but see. There's this whiteboard you get it at Staples for up here, okay Canadian that's fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. But oh my arm that hurts. Um, the uh, the whiteboards is, is fantastic because I have my my pens right here. Mm-hmm. Um, I just go straight to work on that. So if there's ideas that I have. Um, either it goes in my iPhone notes or it goes mm-hmm. in there. And my iPhone notes are scary. Very, very <laughs> <Mine scary. too. laughs> 
Okay. Same. You you may, you may have ADHD too. Um, <laughs> I only play a doctor on a podcast. So I'm not really, you know, that's it. Um, uh, but uh, the 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 the, uh, the other tip is there a there is a book and I'm gonna look up the title super quick. It is by Matthew May. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to and do I'm this. gonna pull out my notes now because I do have notes on books that I am going to read. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. So the the book is by Matthew May. It's called mm-hmm. Winning the Brain Game: Fixing the Seven Fatal Flaws of Thinking. It's a short book. And what's fantastic about it is that Matthew's also a really nice guy. Um, mm-hmm. And he's got a hell of a story uh, that he did with uh, Mark Graven on a podcast too, okay. um, where he nearly died. That's a whole other thing. Um, but uh, that book is amazing because he goes through seven super, super practical ways of problem solving. Okay. And, you know, if there's something like, um, I don't know, if if there's some, if you've got an idea, the mm-hmm. idea of, or the process of doubling down on an idea, even though you may not think it works, is mm-hmm. a very effective technique that may very well push your idea over top of actually making it work. Okay. Um, things like that are what's in the book, just seven dead simple ones. I can't remember. I can't doubling down is the only one I can remember right now. Can you but, elaborate uh, a little bit more on that doubling down? Cause I, so I, let's take, let's take, um, uh, I'm going to get briefly political for a second. I'm going to okay. use, uh, I'm going to actually, you know what? Forget that dummy. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use Barack Obama. <laughs> okay. Cause I'm, I'm much rather be positive. So what, Barack Obama did, which I loved, is he mm-hmm. really capitalized on optimism. Mm-hmm. And everything that he did, it wasn't about, ah, oh, this might not work out. He really didn't say that. What he said, um, and this is something that I absolutely identify with, was mm-hmm. this is going to be a challenge. This will be tough. But we're going to get through it and we're going to identify what those steps are along the way. And this is what's going to happen at the end. Okay. That's doubling down. That's essentially what it is. And that is why that that's what the, the book has got ton. Like it's those seven things that are about it, but it's mm-hmm. such a great, um, it is such a great book for problem solving mm-hmm. that, a brain like mine that doesn't turn off, I give it gives it a um it gives it a structure to solve a problem through instead of just random things just popping up. Um I'm great at pro- I'm great at solving problems. Trust me. I, the the ideas that I have, they just come out of the blue half the time and it's exhausting. Um the irony, funny enough, is that's what actually got me to sort of burn out on things. Mm-hmm. But um the uh because i wasn't willing to accept anxiety or depression at the time Mm -hmm. but um no you having a tool or a format of of problem solving and things like that or a creative process i think is probably just very very helpful and having a place Mm -hmm. to write it down but it can be a book it can be a whiteboard the whiteboard the thing i love about the whiteboard is that it's on a mirror it's literally right in your closet. face <laughs> it's right in your face but the material the material you, you can stick anywhere mm-hmm. you can put it on a wall a mirror whatever it's this thin material and mm-hmm. it's the same whiteboard stuff you find in the office it's great i love <laughs> i i absolutely love my thing so yeah question or if you feel if you feel comfortable did you Ask. recently I'm get that usually Okay. Did you recently get diagnosed with ADHD? I was diagnosed like how, at 47. At 47? Wow. That's yeah. so late in the game, too. <laughs> well, well, and it, 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 it was no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you can you can interrupt me and stop. And I'm I one of the things that I also do, um, I didn't put it into the intro, which uh, I can I'll I'll say it now is that being an advocate, I also um uh, and part of a what we call it's an advocacy it's a nonprofit, but mm-hmm. it's the ADH it's the ADHD Advocacy Society of BC BC being British Columbia where I am. Okay, and so we are talking with uh, you know really we're educating people about you know ADHD in general and trying to get supports 
for people in schools because ADHD has got nothing to do with IQ. Mm -hmm. You are perfectly smart. The what ADHD does in our brains, however, um, of, of affecting things like your executive functions, keeping yourself organized, your working memory, um, your emotional regulation, where one little emotion is amplified times a thousand. Mm -hmm. And that could be a positive or negative amplification. You don't know mm -hmm. half the time. Your, but keeping yourself organized in that sense uh, it is very tough. Sometimes, a lot of the times we will have trouble starting projects mm -hmm. because we may think about all the steps that are going in there, but then there's no, again, like I was mentioning earlier, turning off my brain and just going, removing all the steps. It's like, I'm just going and that's, mm -hmm. and that's sort of it. Um, those are the things, but yeah, it, again, it was a, it was a two hour conversation my wife and I had where we were just making fun of each other. And it really, it started, it, it then went into making fun of me and we're like, oh, I wonder how ADHD I am because we hadn't received Owen's autism diagnosis yet. Mm -hmm. Again, other story, but uh, we stopped at like 25 or 26 different things that I have trait wise. Mm -hmm. And that's when I looked back, I started to look back more on childhood and I'm like, oh crap. And that is what opened my eyes to everything. And I embraced it. Um, I, I absolutely have have embraced it because it's been very positive with the exception of when I got really, really, really burned out. And mm -hmm. I remember it, it was so bad to the point of uh, there was a job I was working at and the it was during COVID and it was at a hospital. And so I was working on the hospital floor, full PPE. Uh, that's the protective gear that you wear, a mask and goggles and such. Mm -hmm. And so um, it job was not going good. It was pretty bad. And so as I was driving home, because my memories just sucks, you know, I would have a thought of how to solve something and, mm -hmm. or what I could do, but then I could never remember. I could never remember it by the time I got home mm -hmm. and I would pull over. And, you know, off the highway and write notes on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just like, I, I just couldn't do it. It, it really, it was, it was a breaking point for me, um, you know, to the point of being in tears because it was just impossible to, to manage it. So <clears throat> fast forward two years later from that job or so, and, and that's when we had the conversation and that's when I got it and, and it explained and opened up so much mm -hmm. and, I refuse to, you know what, Owen's, and even Owen's autism diagnosis was, was its own journey. When he was four and a half, like mm -hmm. I had mentioned earlier, he got a, um, he got his ADHD diagnosis and we knew nothing about ADHD. Mm -hmm. uh, we had been on the wait list for five years for his, for a public diagnosis because we couldn't afford to go private. And so you, I mean, it's, this is all on the podcast and trying to be as abbreviated as I can for it because mm -hmm. of the way that the pediatrician and the hospital lost the referrals and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But when it came time for our appointment, we had two weeks to prepare and I went into Microsoft Excel and I wrote out, um, I had a little bit of help, but uh, mm -hmm. I took the diagnostic manual. I took all the ADHD traits that were in the DSM. Uh, mm -hmm. DSM is short for diagnostic manual. Mm -hmm. And I basically listed, we listed everything from birth till now of all the traits that we knew of and all the things that we saw. So, hey, hand flapping, shaking heads, mm -hmm. rigidity, all this stuff. We stopped at 300 rows. And then my wife still wrote another 14 pages. I wrote another eight pages in Microsoft Word and we kept going. And so that idea of that creativity, um, mm -hmm. it also buggered up my shoulder too, funny enough. But um, that creative energy of coming up with that solution because mm -hmm. it was the way I knew to communicate that we go into the appointment, the doctor thought that some one of his staff members did it and he was blown away. And I'll show you the spreadsheet later, mm -hmm. but, uh, but he goes, he goes, I, he, he was praising his staff and my wife was like, actually Mark did it. And I put, and he's just like, what? And I'm like, yeah. And so I was not here to like, 
my wife. Yeah, you were you were there to get it. We were not we were not there to play. (laughs) We were dead after five years of this. We were there to we I was Mm -hmm. up. Anyways, um the uh at the at the report, um he I he I didn't we weren't I mean we we got our we got the diagnosis finally and that was just such an amazing experience too. But in the report uh, that you get at the end of it, he mm-hmm. he put a special note in to say he has never met um a set of parents that have been historians of their child. Aww. And that. again, it, I I choke up with that and to have had that kind of recognition. Mm-hmm. But again, this just isn't about Owen getting his diagnosis, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not about the doors that it opens for him in mm-hmm. terms of having that diagnosis. And now we've got access to funding and other things. But it is a it is that cr- it is a creative not everybody's going to think like this. And mm-hmm. I, I, and I wonder on your part too, I fully accept that my brain is the way that it is. And it, these are all very creative things because this is what goes on in my mm-hmm. head half the time. Do you find the same sort of thing that you are applying one creative technique to a certain problem? And you, do you take off those walls sort mm-hmm. of thing. Like you talked about from the point point of view of mood. Hey, if I'm painting, you know, I'm generally happy. Mm-hmm. Or if I'm doing something writing wise, it's typically somber if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. But do you are those the are those the lines that you stay in? Or are no. you looking at it in terms of emotion, this is what I'm gonna do. And you just go. Uh no. It's something that I picked up. Right. Like when you when you go into making something, you're not at least for me. I don't know. There's some people that they can they can picture it in their mind and know exactly how they want the outcome to look. I have made so many paintings and so and I've started on just writing notes and um, and just short stories and stuff like that, where it was just one little idea and I didn't know where I wanted it to go but I I know I wanted to kind of just run with it and see what happens um and yeah and the the emotion thing is something that I picked up like as doing it but it's not something that I set out to do like if I'm writing and it just so happens that it's kind of somber and contemplative that just it just it happens to be um but it's speaking to that part of you at that mm-hmm. time. At that yeah. exactly. It's just it's the it's it's more of like I like to to kind of call it like capturing a moment inside Stephanie's mind, right? Yeah. Like a moment inside me. I'm just capturing when I express myself, whether it's through painting, through writing. Um I I've used GarageBand to make some songs. They're not amazing, but <laughs> I, when I make them, it's I think of it as like I'm capturing a moment of myself, like a, a yeah. snapshot of that current Stephanie. Um, yeah. I like to read a lot of like uh, Tao and like Buddhist books, and there's always that concept of like you are never the same person that you are, yeah. right? Like it's this idea of like continue continuous like like I'm not the same person and after our conversation I will not be the same Stephanie that I was an hour ago no. um no. and it's to me my creations whatever that medium may be is yeah. capturing that moment of Stephanie's creative mind and it just so happens that there are moods that were captured in that there are thematic that were captured in those moments because that's where I felt that's how I was thinking of it um or that's just how time how I expressed myself throughout that time yeah yeah don't knock and it's funny because don't knock garage band because the song that I wrote for my wife was written in garage band yeah that here yeah so it a lot of the stuff I read I've I because I'm used to I I'm I mean I'm I live in the Mac world anyways, mm-hmm. but um, <laughs> the the um, the Garage Band is such an amazingly powerful thing to use, and mm-hmm. I've uh, I I've gone into Logic now, 
And that's been a lot of fun to, to sit there and, and do stuff because now I'm, I was very gentle on myself, uh, Mm -hmm. when learning this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I had, I got, so it's really fun. Uh, little funny a side story the pop filter that i'm speaking into um mm-hmm. i was looking for a cheap one and um i found one on on marketplace and uh so i went to pick it up for i think i got this for like 10 bucks or whatever mm-hmm. and uh, and the guy that i got it from i asked him i said what's your background because i also wanted or oh, sorry actually it wasn't the pop filter it was the arm it was the recording the arm yeah the arm sorry mm-hmm. anyways um so I, I asked him, I was like, you know, where'd you get this arm? I haven't seen this one before. And he's like, oh, he happened to be a voiceover artist. Oh. And so I began to uh, ask him questions. I'm like, can you give me any help? So if it wasn't for Christian, um, my podcast would sound like would sound like it did in the beginning, but he gave me some amazing tips in, in, uh, in, in logic. And I'm just like, sweet, this is fantastic. Um, and I know you can do similar sort of things and garage band sounds amazing just out of the box mm-hmm. to begin with. Um, the, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a setting in there on my base. Um, there's a bass or rather there's a, there's a bass amp setting in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the bass stack one and it sounds fun on my base itself. It sounds phenomenal mm-hmm. it, on any other base. It probably would sound crappy, but I, every instrument is different. Um, mm-hmm. but it's a matter of finding those right things. But if it wasn't for Christian, I wouldn't have had a good sounding podcast. And and that was, that was a really nice thing to have, to have had. I, I, I quite like that. Um, yeah. Side, side, a little tangent there. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, my, my best friend, um, she, she also started her podcast, um, uh, mm-hmm. Shout out to her. It's her birthday tomorrow. Um, Happy birthday. She, <laughs> she uh she's also a musician. She's a songwriter. Oh, cool. Um, she plays the piano, she plays the guitar, she's working cool. on her vocals. She's I always think that she has a lovely voice. Um, but yeah. you know, we're all self-critics. Um, but yeah, she, I can't her favorite <laughs> I can't I sing suck either. At it. <laughs> like uh like my dad likes to say i can sing it just sounds like my veins are kind of like constricted <laughs> like it's not working um but i was anyway. trying i was trying to do three-part harmony with with my friends and in, in our band years and years ago uh-huh. and 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 kevin and brian just sort of looked at me and they're just like you're singing the bass note right <laughs> sure yeah yeah I, that's kind of it and, and I'm like, should I try a different note? No, 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 no. Don't try a different <laughs> note. Just, just go. Oh my um, gosh. So I've, I've always wanted to be able to sing, but mm, yeah. Same. Owen, Owen likes, <laughs> Owen sings quite a bit. So it's kind of funny that he's got that and I don't, but that's okay. That's his strength. <laughs> Everybody has their own unique strengths. You'll teach him how to play the bass and then he can, you know, we'll see him in concerts yeah. in the future. <laughs> yeah. But you're you're but you're back to your back to your friend. yeah. So um, she actually uses Logic Pro um to record all of these and and record her songs and stuff. So every now and then um she'll like she'll be like oh stuff I'm working on this thing and I can't figure it out on Logic Pro. It's so I you know um, hey, I'm, I'm happy to create the Logic Pro support club uh, between the three of us. No problem. Oh yeah, I, I always she would need... love that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always need, um, what's it called? It, like when I'm writing and coming up with something, I do need that musical. Um, I, I do need that theoretical guidance of where do I take these things? Because a, mm-hmm. one of the hardest things that I have, I'm just going to get it. Hang on. Mm-hmm. Oops. So when I'm going to plug in as well. Mm-hmm. I was I actually meant to do this before because I thought Oh we guys, gonna... we're getting <laughs> we're getting a live show. Woots woots. Not really. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> uh... All right. So, so I wish I could move my camera back a bit more actually. What I have. Right. 
Okay. So like when I'm sitting there coming up with a, um, with anything, mm -hmm. um, like the song that I had originally come up with for my wife was, mm -hmm. no, it wasn't, um, won't use that. But if I come up with a, with chords, like, I don't know. Ah. Like what chord is that? No, no idea. <laughs> what key what key am i doing this in i have no clue and it's partly a good thing about creativity but i want to be able to guide where i'm going mm -hmm. um when i when i do this stuff so it's it's been interesting to sit there and come up with you know weird things and i try not to have the limits on on music at all mm -hmm. i you know that's if anything that's one thing music taught me was take don't don't put limits on on what you want to uh, don't don't put limits on yourself in terms of what you think you know or what you don't know mm -hmm. just go with what you hear and feel mm -hmm. and if it's wrong if it's wrong make the mistake mm -hmm. if it's right you're going to be grateful for it and mm -hmm. then when you're recording yourself you're like oh hey that actually does work mm -hmm. or maybe it doesn't but mm -hmm. be okay to make the mistakes. Just make them. They're not even mistakes. It's just the process of writing. Mm -hmm. That's it. I think that's that's uh, a good point to just make about whenever you're doing anything creative. Like sometimes what you think is a mistake actually turns out to be a beautiful accident. <laughs> oh, big time. <laughs> yeah, big right? time. It's just, big time. It, I can't say how many. Okay, so like I was recently working on, um, I, I've been calling it the Murphy painting. Um, I've been working on this new painting and I used the top coat to kind of like solidify, like, um, lock in the paint. Yeah. And I noticed that it started, uh, drying on like the aluminum foil that I was using to, to catch the excess. And it would make like these really cool bubble things. And like, I, it's not that it's a mistake. Well, kind of it was because it was like the first time I was using the top coat and I had to use too much. So I had the excess. But point being, I found something really cool off of it that now, like after seeing that, I was like, oh, now I can make these cool little designs. And then I was able to make part of the piece kind of like relieve where like you can like put your hand over it and feel like the whale, like the bumps of the whale and stuff. Yeah. It's like, so, I mean, mistakes can lead to really cool discoveries that you you didn't really think you could do no and i think even the word mistakes is interesting because when we start using that word it mm -hmm. makes it seem like there's a right and a wrong mm -hmm. and honestly like unless we're doing surgery mm -hmm. um the right and wrong very much to be a star wars nerd for a minute is very much a point of view mm -hmm. right it it that it's something that we may not have thought about but it's happened and you're like oh i did not mean for this to take place and now it has and you're like okay cool mm -hmm. done and, and and that was it and and you're just like that was really smart mm -hmm. i'm glad my i'm glad my unconscious brain or subconscious whatever mm -hmm. came up with it that, that's fantastic yeah so Ooh, we've had a lovely conversation today. <laughs> um, I did, we didn't even get to half the question. No, we like... did it. Not at all. It's just been, I, I'd say, I said it to you earlier. I love for just creative, like just let it flow. Although I did have some pre-written questions, that's just guidance. Um, but I like things to just the conversation to flow. Um, I did. I, I would. I would say this, uh, mm -hmm. looking at that list that you gave me. Okay. So you know how I incorporate the creative process into daily life for the most part, mm -hmm. like everything is creative, really, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, does it ever feel like a drag? In my case, no. Mm -hmm. What is hard is convincing people that the idea is valid mm -hmm. um, and that it actually serves the point. Mm -hmm. But it's not that it ever feels like a drag. Like it's it's not that. It's just you get tired when because my brain doesn't shut off. Mm -hmm. That is what gets tiring. Mm -hmm. 
where you're constantly on this go, 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 when your body can't even keep up with the go, 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 your mind. I don't know do. how to relax. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how. I, I, I just feel that. That I completely, I, I can resonate with you on that. Um, that's why I, I do podcasts. I do paintings. I write, I read. I My, constantly con- my brain constantly has to have something to do. Yeah. Um, so I feel that. I think when I wrote that question, what I was trying to, what I was trying to get to is exactly that. Like, does it ever get tiring where you're like, I want to create, but, oh, I don't have the energy to do that right now. Like I want to do yes. this thing, yeah. but I don't have that energy. And an answer to, and an answer to that question. Yes. And that's when I know. And that's when I recognize within myself that um, I'm tired and I'm burning mm-hmm. out. And like another tired thing that I know for me is that um, I get random songs playing in my head. And mm-hmm. Quite honestly, I hate it. Um, and it can, trust me, it can be any song from ABBA to Beatles to Metallica to mm-hmm. Iron Maiden to what, it doesn't matter. It could just be a motif that's playing in my brain and it just doesn't want to stop. Mm-hmm. Miley Cyrus, you name it. Um, it. My brain's horrible for it. And I know that when I'm tired, it happens more. Mm -hmm. And when I realize that it's like, okay, I need to find a way to detour my brain and unplug or take away somehow. Um, But it's a sign for me that that's what's going on up there, uh, which is not always easy. So that's interesting that you say that, like how our brain uses things that, so it's not necessarily creating itself, but it's bringing in things that you've, that it's kind of like, you, you like those songs, right? And it's like, it doesn't want to, it needs to fill empty space of like <laughs> doing something else. So it's like, you know what? I don't have the energy for that right now, but you know what? I can listen to this song and I'm just going to put it on repeat. And like, it's, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll pretend like we're doing something. Well, yeah. And, and it's, and I think it's interesting. Like if I was to take, um, and I apologize to anybody that's got the same thing, by the way, this goes for thoughts and and speech as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know there's a saying for, I know there's a term for, I just can't remember what it is. But if, if there's something that you said, uh, that idea of something echoing in your brain, mm-hmm. that is my brain for most of the time. But a lot of the songs, I mean, I'm, it's a 50, it's 50, 50. I mean, for the most part, I'm, you know, metal, jazz, progressive, mm-hmm. rock, R&B, you know, R&B, 60s, 50s. It, like, it's pretty good. I am not listening to Tupac. I am not listening to Ice Cube. I am not listening to to that stuff, but I'm not listening to Celine Dion. However, Hello. my heart will go on if I'm tired is going to really <laughs> me off. I love and that. I, it like, it, I will not like a lot of these songs sometimes. And uh, it's really hard. So I feel um, that. again, that's a, fr- <laughs> a friend of mine. A friend of mine said, because it's an ADHD thing, our brains tell us that we're not bored. Mm-hmm. That we, there's always something to do, but that's false. Mm-hmm. That's why we do. So, that's why we tend. That's why we can do so much and have so many random projects started. But there is no sort of stop to mm-hmm. it. It's we're just coming up with it. Like it's it's yeah. It's it's funny that way. Um, now that you mentioned that, so I know that it's a it's common for ADHD um, uh, individuals that they start a lot of projects but they never get to finish or like they don't see an end to that because they, they are. What do you mean the other way around? Well, you can also finish something, but it takes you forever to finish, but it's, you know, you might not actually start very much, Mm -hmm. but you might actually finish something, but it might take you, no, somebody else without it would, you know, ah, might take them a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, ADHD brain is probably going to take it two years. You know what, so, Mark? After you know, having both. this conversation, I think I gotta go. I gotta go check. <laughs> I've been writing a book for the last four years. <laughs> you say that, I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> oh man, no, I'm, I'm kidding. This, uh, this, is, this is a whole other. But like I said, this is a whole other thing, and I only play. I only play a doctor on a podcast, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so. Like how much would you say, so after you got your diagnosis and you like kind of reflected upon your life, like, did you realize, oh man, I have so many projects I never finished and stuff like that. Cause that, that's, yes. 
Yeah. Yes. 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 And a lot of the ideas, this is where I think the time blind side of ADHD comes in mm-hmm. is that because I, I suck with recognizing how long something takes. I'm horrible for it. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you an example back in my, in my logistics job, when I was automating order entry, mm-hmm. um, and the reason I was automating order entry is because I found out that the program, the software that we had, had these, um, soft keys that you could program with keystrokes. Mm -hmm. So I went into Microsoft Excel and I basically said, uh, if anybody doesn't know what a concatenate, uh, the concatenate function is, is you take input from one cell, combine it with another, and then you flow and then you have combined two cells together or multiple cells, whatever. Okay. Um, so if a customer sends me an order, instead mm-hmm. of typing out by hand and doing manual data entry mm-hmm. and possibly making mistakes, I automated that whole process through Excel. I would take the code um, that the concatenated field had, and mm-hmm. I would combine it with the keystrokes that were needed in the program. So, you know, if you think about when you type in a line, um, you know, you type in your address, then you hit enter, then you mm-hmm. hit the arrow key. And you do this and all that stuff was just, I, I just, I just mapped it all out. Um, that oh crap. My cool. brain just did it. What was the, <laughs> hang on, what was the question just, oh, oh, sorry. The, I know was, the time thing. So <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the process of creating something like that, as mm-hmm. much as I will, as much as I'm an expert in Excel and mm-hmm. as much as I've done programming, this is not a five minute job, mm-hmm. but I will say it you know what? Give me 10 or 15 minutes. No, give me an hour. <laughs> I, I have no concept of, of time. like, it's really tough to, to sit there and, and measure my concept of time. Um, and things like the Pomodoro technique where you set yourself a timer mm-hmm. and you, you work for 30 minutes on one specific thing. That is what gets me through a lot of the stuff. And I have a hard time saying no as well. So oh, yeah. the people pleasing is real. It's not even the, it's not people pleasing. It's, it's the, not? It's, it's the ideas in my head pleasing mm. because I can't let it go. Mm. So <laughs> if I, I like have that. an idea, for, <laughs> if I have an idea for something, mm-hmm. oh, it's going to probably happen in one form <laughs> or another. <laughs> and it's bad that way. It is. So, yeah. But it, I don't know. I can't, I can relate with that where like, I love take like, if I don't know something, I will say yes in a heartbeat because I love figuring it out. Like I love to just jump in there and figure it out. It, it might, I, and I'll tell you, it might take me 30 minutes and it could take me like a whole day because I'll keep finding new things and oh my God, do you know this software can do this and it can do this and then I can like connect it with this other thing. Yeah. 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 I, I can only imagine. It's and it's interesting because even the 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 like I just saw that one question, you know, what obstacles or challenges stop you from pursuing that? Mm-hmm. Um the I that is certainly one of them when you like I don't know how to write that very well on a resume, for example. Mm-hmm. And you know, how do you how, how do you can, communicate that? How do you, how do you communicate or convey it? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's it's people will look and be like, oh, that's that's cute. Or or they'll see it as maybe not necessarily a big deal, but mm-hmm. it's such a massive deal that mm-hmm. you oh, I don't know. Like it it's you're making you're making someone's life easier. And mm-hmm. that's one of the that's one of the core things for me. And small aside, when my father in law passed away in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, watching him go down dementia and uh, cancer taking eventually, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, cancer taking him eventually. Um, uh, well, combination of cancer and dementia, really. But mm-hmm. um, being in that hospital for as long as we were, and and the challenges that we were starting to have with Owen, the the thing that hit in my brain when I was sitting in the hallway was. I have a saying, my time on this plane of existence is limited. Mm -hmm. And that's all of our times. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm going to next, but I don't want to see somebody else waste their time in a process that's sucking the life out of them. Mm 
Mm-hmm. That's why that's why I that's why I pursued that automation thing so badly. That's why I did the when I worked with Campar and FedEx in our warehouse to redo the entire shipping system mm-hmm. to make it so if 500 boxes came off a truck, 500 labels printed out, that one label came out at a time as you scanned it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to program a scanner, but again, I learned mm-hmm. and that whole process was like that saved that took that went from a, a 10 plus hour a day process every single day mm-hmm. down to zero to one. Wow. Because I believe that strongly in it. And don't like I know we talk about getting paid per hour or salary, or whatever, but mm-hmm. my t- my time is not paid. I, I would rather make someone's life better. Mm-hmm. It. And that's, that's the core, that was that core piece right there. So um, it is a, what can I do to contribute to society, to whatever? Mm-hmm. That's partly why I've gotten into advocacy as hard as I have. And it doesn't feel it's, I just need a paycheck to start happening now for the advocacy stuff. Um, but, you know, my son needed me, my mm-hmm. daughter needed me this is where this stuff matters. And I didn't have the help when I was in school, when I was in being, when I was held back a grade, I didn't have the help. I didn't have the support. The fact that my son is going into grade four and he graduated grade three, it means the world to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm so very, very proud of, proud of him for that because that's the year I was held back. So Again, I was told I'm not mature enough to move on to the next grade, mm-hmm. which is such a load up. It, yeah, that's no. not. Anyways. Anyways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 a uh, it, there's, there's that deeper meaning behind mm-hmm. those things. It, it's important. I want to go back to what you said of yeah. like, how do you, that you that that that's a core thing like you wanted to find a way to make an impact in people's lives and I think that's that's our purpose right like as humans is to find the way that we can impact our community impact those around us and make something more make our experiences a little bit more uh not valuable but like significant right yeah like yeah and Although you may not be getting a paycheck for your advocacy, I'm sure that you're the community and those that that hear your podcast and like, you know, they resonate with your with your message and, you know, um, empathize with your family and all of that, like that makes an impact that is very significant um, yeah. and very valuable. I said something very similar to somebody yesterday about this exact, very similar to your words, um, because they were, they, they were a little bit down and I'm like, you have no idea how much impact that your suggestion has on somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. We all Mm want to see things work well. And it's nothing about kumbaya, nothing Mm -hmm. like that. It is, um, you know, we shouldn't have to struggle this hard in life. Mm-hmm. It, it shouldn't be like that. And there should be caring and kindness and, and everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, that spreadsheet that I told you about for Owen's autism diagnosis, mm-hmm. uh, I took that and I'm in a couple of Facebook groups, um, one for ADHD and one for autism. And mm-hmm. so um, I want to turn that spreadsheet into an app at some point, okay. um, which I'm slowly working on. Not, I'm not going to write the app. That's one thing that I've accepted that my hardcore programming days of learning a brand new language are, are done. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. With, I'm very at peace with this, but I sort of need that team to sit there and figure it out. But I've taken that spreadsheet anyways, and it's up in the files group. So a lot of what you see in these Facebook groups, whether it's ADHD or autism is, mm-hmm. you know, my son, my, my son or my child might be X, um, you know, or they're going for, they have a, they think they have a hard to spot case of being autistic mm-hmm. and the, the spreadsheets up there and I tell people to use it and mm-hmm. I make it available and I make myself available just as a human to help out another parent. The amount of moms I've talked to, not so much dads, um, cause I haven't talked to a dad yet about it, but the amount of women I've talked to about 
you know, doing this stuff and and having mm-hmm. this and having to catalog all these things, it's 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 a, it's uh, it, it's the way that I can help people not go through mm-hmm. what we did and not struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hate the gender discrimination that's out there for for parenting. I hate it. With, yeah, with a oh, like yeah, like... with a passion. So it's so it's so interesting that you said to make that into an app because like I I vision I envisioned the app and then like being able to kind of cross reference like you know you do all these check marks and you kind of see what how many out of the the criteria um is met and yeah. stuff like that like that's such an amazing idea Mark it's an yeah. amazing idea yeah. um but it's something that comes from my brain. Mm-hmm. and your unique uh, experience ex- it, it, exactly. only you can and make I, that like yeah. yeah just like you and your painting mm-hmm. or your writing it really only does come from you mm-hmm. because if i was to try and you know what actually music's a fantastic example of this if i'm trying to uh, Again, I, I I I learned this a long time ago, but the Steve Harris is my biggest idol on bass. Mm-hmm. From what he's done as a bass player, I think is just amazing. I will not, and I am not Steve Harris of Iron mm-hmm. Maiden. I am Mark Smeets of Vancouver, BC. Just mm-hmm. like you are Stephanie Escoto. Um, you we are our own selves, and we have to be comfortable with that because Mm -hmm. i could do a painting like yours that looks so close to the original Mm -hmm. but it is not yours it is mine and it Mm -hmm. is my interpretation of what i see of what you have done Mm -hmm. music is no different it is a band makes a cover of a song they might try to get as close as they want to it because and that's perfectly fine that's totally cool but then you get a chance where a band does a cover of a song and they make it their own. It's because mm-hmm. they know that who they are in their own style. How many times does that not happen in music? I've heard so many songs yeah. just reiterated in a different way and given a new flavor to it, a new twist to it. And it it's not that it's better than the original. It's just, it's, it's its own unique thing. Right. Um, yeah. And it's, it's beautiful all the same with the new, with the new, uh, I think the, word is nuances that they input yeah. into it and the original is beautiful because it comes from that individual creative realm yeah. where nobody can really duplicate what you've created even no, a creator no. themselves has a hard time duplicating an original piece does yeah. that make sense like it's it's it it's, yep. it's hard yeah. to replicate things and it's yeah. it's it caps that's why i say like it captures that moment in time because that moment will not happen again no matter how many times you you want to recreate the same thing it's not going to happen and i and i think that's the other piece of it too because and i would assume you'd agree it's like don't be somebody else just be you mm-hmm. like the creativity is 100 it's it's your it's your it's it's who you are and you can apply it however you want and it doesn't have to be art it can be business it can mm-hmm. be logistics it can be it can be anything, uh, anything. And, Anything. and that's what I really like to, to make sure that people sit there and, and, and understand. And it's funny because um, it, when you think about uh, in the case of something like autism, and let's say you have somebody that's non nonverbal, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so if someone can't speak, that doesn't take away from their intelligence, mm-hmm. that that doesn't take away from their, that does not necessarily take away from their ability to communicate. What it does is that it forces that person or somebody else to find a different way that they can communicate those ideas. Mm-hmm. That could be tech, that could be typing, uh, mm-hmm. a text to speech, that could be drawing, that mm-hmm. could be music. Um, there's the way that that person who's nonverbal will communicate is no less valid than the words that we are using. Mm -hmm. But when we're in a school setting, for example, um, you know, so many teachers, it's just horrible that, you know, sit down in your seat and don't say nothing. Well, that's not Mm -hmm. how a lot of kids learn. Mm -hmm. Um, 
even when we were talking, like I'm playing with my little, I'm, you know, I'm fidgeting on my pick Mm -hmm. and that's just normal, but that could be a pencil or I could be told to sit down and do nothing and stop moving. But it's like, no, you don't have that right. Mm -hmm. Um, But the way that we do, the way that we communicate these things, I think is a, um, what's the word? It's, it's so overlooked that it has to be done a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I guess the irony is that someone who is more, someone who, who may be autistic or or neurodiverse or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're the ones that are told they're quote unquote rigid, but it's the people who are controlling the system that are Mm -hmm. actually the rigid ones. So it's, it's messed, it's funny and messed up all at the same time. It's, uh, it's ironic. Like you mentioned, it's, it's definitely ironic. And it's, it's even more ironic because the act of teaching is to me, like you're, sh- you should be showing somebody how there are many ways to learn information, right. Yeah. And the, and how everybody has their own unique ways of receiving that information and being to articulate certain information. Right. Yeah. Um, and, I'll, and it's not to just spew facts and tell them to memorize these facts is no, how no. do you, how do you, learn learning is about like you receive that information you interpret it you, so you can make your own ideas your own you know your own creative way of connecting those dots so that you can see a different picture or a bigger yeah. picture whatever that bigger picture may be um biased or unbiased <laughs> we, we've put there's there's been far too much emphasis put on the outcomes on the letter mm-hmm. grades and not about the process of learning. Mm-hmm. And I was saying this mm-hmm. to some friends this morning. It's not about how this person learns differently. Mm-hmm. If you need to stand up and have the and you know and talk things out, how mm-hmm. is that again? How is that any less valid than raise your hand sitting down? It's mm-hmm. it's no different. Some people can, some people cannot. Mm-hmm. Don't people shouldn't feel shame as a result. Um, but you see it. In in so many settings and school districts, I think are are the criminals when it comes to that stuff because mm-hmm. they say one thing but they don't enforce it in the schools. And I mean, that's, I, that's unfortunate. Just to play devil's advocate, I also feel like they're kind of put into this weird into this weird scenario, right? Like you you're being sent a bunch of kids that aren't your kids, <laughs> um, so you can teach them. But the only way that you're going to be compensated for that time and for your for your job, right, is based on how well these kids are doing on their t- yes. tests and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a whole thing within itself. It's a whole baby within itself where it's like, how could they feel motivated if like, you know, the kids are unmotivated as well. And like they're con- their whole it's a whole thing, like just being because... contingent. And, and, and I, and I agree. And I think the, the side of that is that the, the systems that we have, number one, are gender biased, they're sexist, they're ableist, they're Mm -hmm. racist, they're systemic. Mm -hmm. This has been from, I mean, you know, just hopefully nobody gets turned off when I hit the, as soon as I say the word (laughs) colon, the colon, you know, colonization, Mm -hmm. but the idea of the 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 genocide that the british did to and other governments to whether it's our government or the canadian one Mm -hmm. um did the indigenous people like this stuff has has stuck around in this systemic way and this is the system that we are a part of Mm -hmm. and really it's an antiquated system too like exactly it's not with the times and it's it's so no No, it's, it's all, it's all rooted in that stuff. And when you begin to see it, you cannot unsee it. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's, that's a, it's, it's a massive tragedy. So Mm -hmm. when you're like, when we're advocating, like, uh, you know, the, with our ADHD advocacy group, Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking with the government in a, in a month, we've got a, um, a really cool, uh, uh, what's it called? Cross ministry roundtable that we get to present with, mm-hmm. and so the idea that we are going to go in there and show a lot of these kind of things um, 
it's it's such a it's such an enormous responsibility to be able to do because we're only like i mean there's there's you know we're four of us i mean there's other there's plenty of other people calling this out in the world Mm -hmm. but it's 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 a big deal because you want to get it right and you want to bring the attention to it and you want the systemic change to be changed once and for all Mm -hmm. than anything because you want kids like mine to sit there have a different experience of what i grew up with Mm-hmm. or what somebody else grew up with. Uh, and it's such a, it's such a big, de- it's, it's, it's a, it's a big deal, but it's also, you know, you're lucky. It's, it's almost that honor to be able to sit there and do that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's even interesting with things like that, coming up with those creative solutions of, you know, if something doesn't work, what avenues can you sort of follow through of, well, we could try this theory. We could, we, you know, we could try this solution, this solution, this solution, Mm -hmm. but then you can dive down into the person as well. If Mm -hmm. you, you know, there might be somebody that's actually being the roadblock. It's nothing to do with solutions. Somebody may legitimately believe that dyslexia is a disease. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's, it's not actually, Mm -hmm. um, how do you reach that person? What are the what are the creative ways that you can f- get to their point of view and figure it out? Mm-hmm. Um, again, and have them the see your perspective. Angle. Like find a find a beautiful middle ground, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you are amazing. <laughs> you are an amazing and very inspiring uh, human being. I'm so happy I got a chance to speak with you. I do have to wrap up. I'm yeah. sorry. No. Um, I hope we can schedule another time and let's continue. This oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's, I want to, I want to know more. I want to get more updates yep. and stuff. Um, go ahead and plug in where, uh, where our listeners and our listeners can go ahead and, and find your podcast as well. Um, and you know, any other websites or anything like that where they can help, um, and if they want to uh, contribute and be a part of a part of that, um, well, I, I thank you for the wonderful conversation. It has been a lot of fun, yes. and I have to apologize for the sirens going off in the background that just kicked in, but at least it was now. So, as far as the podcast goes, you can find the podcast "We Are the ADHD Family" on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, wherever ever other, other place I listed it. If you go to facebook.com slash we are the ADHD family as one word, you will find the Facebook page. You can find me on LinkedIn as well. I think I'm under Mr. Mark Smeets, I believe. I think I've got the Mr. in there. Yes. Um, and um, there was a purposeful reason for that too, actually. But it's another story. Um, <laughs> I would sad. say uh, contact me through one of those two things. And if you want to look up the ADHD Advocacy Society of BC, Take a look through that as well. And you can find us on Facebook under a similar name and our uh, main website's there as well. And I float around on Instagram every so often. So there you go. Awesome. Um, Thank you everybody for listening to Creative Street. I will catch you guys next time. Stay creative. Bye.